It is the best day to just show up. Hello everyone, Yvonne Heath here, nurse turned author, speaker, and change maker, and your host. Welcome to Navigating Grief with Heart and Humor, where we talk about plan and prepare for grief, transitions, and end of life, and all the messiness in between, long before it arrives so we can diffuse the fear and live fully now. Or if we have been through transitions, faced the death of a loved one, lost a job, had to move, and we were distraught, and we had no idea we were grieving, and we want to do it differently next time, we are ready to learn and be the change that we want to see in our lives. So for the next 30 minutes, we're going to have this great conversation, and I invite you to just land here Take a moment to shut that door, shut out the noise, all the things that are pulling you away, and just take two slow, deep breaths. I don't know if you are like me. <laughs> But there's a little voice in my head that never stops unless I am very intentional about saying, I need to be present right now. I need to focus, to hear, and to learn. And that is why I take those deep breaths. It really helps to ground me and clear the noise. And I invite you to set an intention for today. What do you need to hear? What would you like to learn? Why are we spending this time together? So let's get started. And um, once again, I am delighted that I have been with you on this journey as every year I reread my book, Love Your Life to Death. We have gone through many of the chapters and, you know, we've had some hard conversations, some wonderful conversations, and I'm just looking at the table of contents because today we're at the halfway mark. We spoke about what a good death looks like, something that is foreign to many of us. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we had those conversations before we need to? Uh, my nursing journey, all that I learned along the way. And you know, when I, when I share that, I want everyone to remember when you are speaking to people you consider experts, know that they are also human beings and they are human beings first. So you are the expert on your journey on your grief journey and your life you know more about your life than any expert whether they have a phd they're an rn a doctor social worker you are the expert and we or professionals are there to guide you and you are there to uh, let them know what you need and learn together we talked about why we've become so scared to death of death how we are trying to cure death and how dying peacefully starts with living fully now, 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 now is the time, right? We are not guaranteed tomorrow. We don't all die of old age. We don't all get a warning and the time to live fully is now. And you are the only person that can change your life. Truly, all the people around you can, can turn themselves inside out, trying to make you happy, trying to make you understand. No one can do that but you, which is reassuring. You have your own power and they have their own power because the other pieces, we spend a lot of time trying to make others happy, make others understand. And the best that we can do is live by example. We also spoke about repairing our internal damage and finding our bliss. We all have triggers. You know, everybody has their story. Even when you see the per person who has the perfect life, is there really such a thing? I don't think so. And if they do, good for them. <laughs> when people say life isn't fair, it's like, yeah, you're, you're right. We don't all get the same journey. We all have different lessons to learn or different lessons we can learn. And so the moment we stop comparing and just try to live the heck out of our very best life, the less we will suffer. Really, the time is now. So chapter six in Love Your Life to Death, 
I love this, as I say about every chapter, because this was truly an extraordinary journey for me. And this chapter is called Spirituality Forgotten, Finding Your Post. Spirituality is one of the most critical and often ignored aspects of our journey. This is where we need to carve out time in our busy lives, even 15 minutes a day, to pause and reflect. We need to make a connection to our core beliefs, our values, if we want to suffer, suffer less in life and at the end of life. Developing rituals of self-care and reflection is a key to finding inner peace so that we can move through deep grief and loss when it arrives. Notice it doesn't say if, it's when, right? We will all face grief and loss. This is a part of this journey, although we'd like it not to be. <laughs> so let's go on a spiritual journey. And for me, it's interesting because I share that I was raised Catholic and it had never occurred to me to, to question what I had, stuck glasses, what I had been taught, what I believed I just, as many of us, this is what I've been taught. This is what I know. And I have absolutely no problem <laughs> with any religion. This isn't about saying this religion is not great. This religion, no, every religion I respect. I respect everyone's beliefs. What I ask people to do is step back and say, does what I have learned serve me? Does it resonate with me? Is this what I believe? Do I feel good about what I've learned? Is there something that doesn't sit well with me, but I haven't questioned it because it's just always been a part of my journey? And, you know, for 18 years, I went to Catholic church and, and, I, I realized that there were many things that didn't resonate well with me and many things that did. So I could take, take what I believed and leave the rest. And I shared that uh, once I was working in Emerge and this, this wonderful, silly nurse named Mark that I was working with told me he was an atheist. <laughs> atheist? Oh my goodness. Like, you don't believe in anything? It's like, no, you live, then you die. And and he was just fine with all of that. It kind of sent me on a little bit of a tailspin because I had just never really questioned. I, I didn't say, well, what do I believe? Do I really believe? And it was incredible. So I did go on a journey, uh, especially when I was pregnant with our twins at age 39. Hello, pregnant with twins. Our son Tyler was 10. And I thought my children are gonna ask me what I believe. And I don't want to just be on autopilot. This is what I've learned. And so it was an incredible journey of discovery, of my own discovery. I spoke to Buddhists, to Catholic priests, to ministers, United Church, Presbyterian, um, people who uh, were atheists, and all wonderful. I met so many wonderful people. And I learned, I learned, I opened my heart and I learned so much and respected everyone along the way. And then I came to a place of what resonates with me? What do I choose to believe? What do I want as my guiding light? And it was a little unnerving. Right, because there is, we all have that sense of community, that sense of, of belonging, which is so critical. And I invite you to ask the group that you are connected to, do their values resonate with yours? And that again is, it's, it, it can be a challenging journey, you know, especially if you have family and friends and, and they may not agree with what you've chosen and they may not be as open to allowing you to, <laughs> to choose your own belief. And that's okay too. Here's the thing. I am not out to convince anyone of anything. 
what I invite people to do, of course, become proactive and to question and to know your own values. And if something does not is not aligned with your values, this is not your community. And that again, can be a big leap. For me, one of my core values and core values, those, those are part of your essence. They are non-negotiable. So for me, one of my greatest core values is that every human being has value. Every human being matters simply because they exist, regardless of age, race, culture, religion, economic situation, ability, disability, sexual orientation. This is non-negotiable for me. So when I went on my spiritual quest and I spoke to many, some of the people who said, I would ask them about, so how do you feel about the LGBTQ Two spirit plus community. And they would say, well, you know, they have their, it's like a, a, an alcoholic who just needs support and love. And I would say, thank you very much. <laughs> I have to go now because that is, that, that did not resonate. And I wasn't there to, they asked me my opinion, who they would get. <laughs> However, that is just non negotiable for me. So I invite you. You're, your beliefs about life, your beliefs about death, your spiritual journey. See, your spiritual journey is about meaning and purpose and values. And any religion can be a part of your spiritual journey. And it is not one or, or it can be one or the other or both. And that's okay. Just so long as it aligns with your values. Does it create a soft landing for you in life and at the end of life? So our spiritual journey can begin now. It does not have to take a lot of time. It's a matter of opening your heart and your mind and your soul and, and being willing to learn. And what I did was I also spoke to people who had a beautiful calmness about them, who, who radiated joy, who were lovers of people. And I said, teach me, what do you believe? What, how, how are you so, so just grounded no matter what is happening? And again, those people are out there. And it is so special to, to connect with many different people and eclectic beliefs and just be open. So if you have been close to this, I, I again, open just a little bit, just to learn, just to learn along the way. So one of the, um, one of the people that I spoke to was my 101 year old friend, Minnie. And when I talked to her about saying, you know, many, we all need something. We all need something. We are a death phobic, grief phobic society. What can we do? And I love many. So I said, when we discussed our death phobic society and I asked what she, we might be missing, she looked at me with her generous smile and gentle blue eyes and said, we all need some sort of post, something to hang on to. And I loved it. That was one of my missing pieces. That became my sixth takeaway. And I was so excited. And that was what it was. It was something to hang on to in those times of despair, no matter what. Your spirituality, religion, yoga, meditation, nature, something. And again, these are all spiritual practices, right? Finding that post, that something that you can hang on to. And again, this is all about creating a life you love and a life that is not lived in fear of death. A funeral director, Terry, says you can't avoid death. It's coming, and that's not something we have control over. People can be obsessed with control 
or at least the illusion of having it. Or at least the illusion of having it. We all love to think we're controlling things. Isn't that hilarious? Have you ever, I, when I'm planning something, I mean, I cross my T's, I dot my I's, I am the quintessential planner and I love to be organized. And you know what? Here's our, our wedding. I had a big binder and everybody used to laugh at me and I made notes for months. I had everything just planned to a T. And when I got up and I was going to throw my garter, I didn't have it on. <laughs> we were close enough. I had someone run to the house and go grab it. Point being, if we think that we will be able to control everything, if we think that we will be able to predict, life is unpredictable. Prepare for anything. Life, grief transitions, end of life, it's all coming. And if we can, if we can, as I say, talk about plan and prepare, and then know that change is the only constant and glitches may happen along the way and life is unpredictable. However, that's still no excuse to say, oh, well, you know, you can plan and it doesn't work out anyway, so I'm not gonna plan. No, no. <laughs> We, it's a yes and. Yes, talk about plan, prepare, have a spirituality, your solid foundation and, and your post. And know that it may not all work out as planned and that is okay too. It will all unfold as it, as it unfolds. <laughs> and that is the key to living life to the fullest right? That acceptance, that acceptance. We have control of our own emotions to a certain degree. We have the power to empower ourselves. We don't have control. There's, there's a difference. That could be a whole big conversation because don't we just love to think we have control? I do. I was very upset when Terry told me that. <laughs> And he knew it. I said, Terry, I like to pretend that we have control. <laughs> Reverend or Minister Thompson, and I love this so much. I was sitting there and, you know, this beautiful minister had known, Jim Thompson had known so much grief in his life in watching his wonderful, beautiful wife die of cancer. And he had his own health challenges and he had been in a four month period, I believe he, he was the funeral, he directed funerals for crib deaths and suicides and so much grief. And I, I was sitting at the edge of my seat and I really respected his beliefs even though they were different from mine. And I said, okay, let me know. What do you believe? What, what happens when we die? <laughs> I love his answer. I haven't the foggiest, but God never turns his back on anyone. And all I know is that we are going to be okay. Simple and beautiful. And this was Jim's post. And, you know, if we can be okay with not knowing and or choosing, oh, yes, life goes on. As my beautiful friend, Leela, who, who is, uh, follows the Buddhist tradition here and, and just, yes, Energy and your spirit goes on. Energy cannot be destroyed or created. That's science. And so they believe in reincarnation and it's one life and then you change forms and you're in another life. And so it's never really goodbye. It's like, see you in the next life. <laughs> How wonderful. And if that's not what you believe, that's okay. Explore. Explore your beliefs now. I will say when it comes to religion, what does frighten me is the story of heaven and hell. And again, I am not here to judge or to change anyone's mind, but I do ask you to question because when people talk about heaven and hell, if you're good, you go to heaven. If you're not, you go to hell. This is conditional love. This is not unconditional love. So 
I believe that no matter what religion, your God is going to love all of his children enough to not punish them to burn in hell, no matter what you've done. I asked um, this wonderful minister, Derek, and uh, what a beautiful soul. And he even wrote a book, um, Dying to Live. And it, ironically enough, Derek had, Derek Shelley, Derek had a radio show and Spirit Cafe and our soul matters. And he went to do his show one day and then he came home and he died in his sleep. Absolutely not anticipated. But this is what he wrote. As a minister, well, I, I wrote about him. As a minister, he pushes the boundaries and questions everything and encourages his congregation to do the same. He considers the Bible a book of questions, not a book of answers. Church and Sunday school have not helped us with our death phobia because there is a heaven and hell story. This is not what I teach. That is what the church has taught for centuries. And I ask, what kind of God would do this? I struggle with the concept that God would punish someone he loves. <sighs> that that love is not stronger than anything we can do wrong, that's wrong. The question shouldn't be, have I done anything bad? The question should be, have I done anything good? So again, I invite you to explore. We can agree to disagree. <laughs> However, if we do not explore our beliefs and our spirituality before we are facing end of life, this is also what Derek says. If, if you have not sought out your answers in life about meaning and purpose, when you are dying, you may have a spirit of crisis. When you are dying, you might have a spirit of crisis. And I have witnessed this time and time again. And so I went on my spiritual journey. And this is what I choose to believe. And this gives me comfort in my life and at the end of my life. It paves the way for me to grieve. It is never about not grieving because you have a belief, you will grieve. We love people, we love things, our, our, our home with transitions that we, are, we do not walk and we will grieve and that's okay because when we move through, we can find joy again and having our spiritual foundation will help us get there. So I believe in living a purposeful life and being the change and making a difference that we are all connected and we are all everyone's and everyone's well-being is everyone's concern. I believe in laughter, goodness, and simplicity in random acts of kindness and bucket filling. We should always leave things better than we found them. I believe that it is my responsibility to become the best version of me that I can be that we all have value and should not judge anyone. We're all for, here for reason or a purpose or reason, a purpose. And when things happen in our lives, we can create purpose from our pain. How do I know this? Because I've done it and I've seen it time and time again in the most extraordinary people. Ordinary people, my heroes. I believe we have no idea, except actually, we have no idea how long our journey will be, but it will be what it is meant to be. When we die, our spirits live on and we can stay connected. We can stay connected. There's nothing to fear. So this is my religion. This is my belief. This aligns with my values. This gives me comfort. And this is enough for me. 
So in searching for your beliefs and questioning, in looking for answers, all your answers are within. All your answers are within. And when you connect with others, they help you to discover what's already inside. So when I say, start your spiritual journey, all it is is one step. Lean into it. Just, huh, do I really believe that? It doesn't have to take a lot of time or effort. It's just a matter of opening up. And here's a few tips to get started. If you can find a peaceful place and sit quietly, even for 10 minutes a day, just be. List your strengths and your gifts. What gives you a sense of purpose? When are you most happy in your bliss? Seek out a mentor who has the kind of inner peace you wish for. This was a wonderful journey for me. Search for that book, that course, that church, gathering or counselor. What resonates? That connection is so important. And again, having wonderful conversations with people is never, ever a waste. <laughs> I have had some of the most phenomenal conversations with, with others who are just so just different and have different beliefs and that's okay. It also helped me clarify, yes, that, that, that is different. That's not for me. What are you missing in your life? And what can you do to find it or to let go? We all certainly have things we need to let go of, don't we? What do you need to love yourself more, to forgive yourself for others? What can you do to love life more, knowing that if you do, it will love you back? <sighs> I will tell you that if I am someone who can go on a spiritual journey and get to this place, you can too. <laughs> I was always busy and running around and drinking wine and dancing on stages. I didn't have time for all of this. The person that I've chosen to become, I would hardly recognize that person. I, I, I was in there. I just was bit so busy fitting in and being busy to not think of these things, to not, to not travel through the painful parts of my past, to unravel beliefs that did not resonate. It was a lot. And I have to say, it wasn't easy. It was, it was uncomfortable at times and it was so worthwhile. I have a new found peace and connection. <laughs> Not all the time, believe me. <laughs> Obviously, I still have my moments, and yet I can always return to this, right? I've created my foundation, my post, my spiritual belief. I know what I need to do when I'm facing grief transitions, end of life, when I am supporting myself or others. And so, please reach out anytime because I am a part of your community. And you can go to the website, loveyourlifetodeath.com because you know I will always connect with you. And there are many resources there. This is a part of your lifelong journey. Create that spiritual path that will help you to connect to like-minded others and to have that spiritual foundation so that you can live peacefully right to the end of your life. So thanks again for joining me. I look forward to the next episode, my call to action as always. If you want to just show up for yourself and others, have a peaceful life, find your spiritual path, plan your life, plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always bring your own tambourine to the party. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next episode. We'll keep 
plowing through these wonderful chapters. And I say they're wonderful because I get to share other people's stories. I invite you to read the book and we can chat about it. Reach out anytime. Namaste, my dear friends. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.